Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. Now, maybe you thought that you wouldn't hear from me today because today is my birthday and I'm receiving uh, texts and, and calls and just so many uh, uh, birthday wishes and such kindness uh, from the people of God and my friends out there. And uh, uh, even though it is my birthday and I thank God uh, for being for living 63 years, I, I praise him for every day and I look forward to serving him for the rest of my days. Uh, someone wondered if I would, uh, what would I do today? Well, uh, since it's a church night and uh, there's a word from the Lord, then I'm excited about spending my birthday right here in my office, doing, making preparations, getting a chance to speak to you and getting the opportunity to uh, invite you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yeah, what better way to spend a birthday than to spend it in the Word of God getting ready for Bible study tonight. I'd rather be here uh, than at the finest resort center, uh, at the finest hotel, or on the prettiest, most pristine beach, or whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm glad to be right here speaking to you, uh, asking you, to join me tonight because tonight our purity weekend begins July 11th through the 14th and I'm excited about what's going on in our purity weekend and I want to send a great big shout, shout out to our youth pastor uh, the one and only uh, uh, Elder John a man Chukwu, who is doing a tremendous job with the youth ministry of our church. And we have a powerful, powerful lineup for the Purity Weekend. And tonight, July 11th, I will be delivering the word of the Lord here at the Purity Weekend. Again, July 11th through the 14th here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about the tremendous job uh, that our youth pastor, Elder John Amanchuku, is doing and the entire youth department. God's doing some powerful things. And uh, uh, on Friday night, you really want to be want to be here for what we call our abstinence crusade. Pastor Justin Mercer will be the evening speaker and uh, the inspirational message will be by uh, from Sister uh, Kalia Thompson. And Kalia is going to give us a mighty word from the Lord. And if you've heard Pastor Justin Mercer before, you know that he is a powerful preacher. And on Saturday, we will have uh, sessions uh, from 10 a.m. To, to noon for youth, uh, all youth five years old and up. And there will even be a session for parents. So we are excited about this weekend. Finally, on Sunday morning, yours truly will conclude uh, the weekend with the, I'm, I'm going to be preaching Sunday right here. And I want you to come and hear the word of the Lord. And we have an extra treat for you. The Elder Jamil Williams will be the early speaker uh, for the 11 a.m. service. And what a tremendous man of God he is. Now, now I, I'm excited about this and uh, I want you to be a part of it. And God's going to bless. And I have a word tonight. For the young people, I have a word for you. There is something that God has given me uh, that is uh, uh, special and I think is going to bless you real good. And we're going to walk in the word of the Lord together and God is going to speak and good things are going to happen because that's what happens when the word of God goes forth. Now, I, I just a little bit here, I, I, I came across an article, you know, uh, I'm always uh, tying uh, biblical truths with events and things that take place in society. 
And one of the reasons, you know, someone asked me, he says, uh, Wooden, why do you, you do that? Um, I, I think that, uh, first of all, nothing is more current than the Word of God. It is more current than tomorrow morning's newspaper. I've been saying that about the Bible for at least 30 years. And everything that goes on in society um, affects how and what we believe one way or the other. And I know Satan's agenda. Satan wants to use everything that he can to change your mind about being a Christian, to turn you away from the God of the Bible, to cause you to walk away from your faith and you can't do it. Uh, just on last night, Brother Gareth putting the pictures on the screen. We met with uh, our seniors who are graduating this year. They're about to go to college. And we took them down to Ruth Chris Steakhouse and had a wonderful time with them, pouring into them the word of the Lord, encouraging them to enjoy school, but get your learning without losing your burning and prepare yourselves. And, and we want them to be prepared for campus life, what they will uh, uh, face and undoubtedly run into. And we want them to know that God's a keeper and that he's a way maker and the Lord blessed us real good. And so here I am now, I'm talking, I want to talk to you about something that I saw. Uh, it seemed to be benign, but it is filled with evil. The passage of scripture that comes to my mind is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 15 in verse 33. It says this, uh, it says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communications corrupt good manners. And many times uh, evil is presented in a benign way. Evil is presented in a harmless, sweet way. And this is a, this is a, oh, this is just a wonderful little article that came my way and I wanted to share it with you. It says, Robin Roberts, you know, the, the sister who is a part of Good Morning America, Robin Roberts says people thinking, listen, you can't be gay and a Christian. You know, I don't call them gay. And a Christian made her afraid of coming out, fearful that I would be shunned. This is the title, uh, the article here, and it was released July the 9th. And, uh, uh, and she says uh, uh, she was afraid that she would be shunned and people believing that you can't be uh, perverted and be a Christian made her afraid. Now, uh, this seems, uh, this is, this seems so nice and to the undiscerning Christian, the undiscerning Christian would say, you know, that is right uh, because the church is so judgmental and they're so quick to judge you and the church is all, uh, uh, they're, they're so mean and that's what's wrong with the church today. But before you even delve into the, the story, I see in Robert, Robert's life, I see in these headlines, great rebellion. I see a determination to disregard the scriptures. I see a determination to change Christianity. You know, they asked Jesus uh, about his disciples, wanting to know why they do not follow the tradition of the elders because they eat with unwashed hands. Jesus said, well, I want to know why you're, you defile or you disobey the traditions of God, the word of God by your traditions. See, listen, Jesus said the most important thing is the word of God. And, and the traditions of men ought to line up with the word of God. Now, the behavior of people is supposed to line up with the Bible and not the Bible line up with the behavior of people. Chris, listen, to be a Christian, you got to line up with the Christian doctrine. I don't, it doesn't matter to me whether you're on Good Morning America, Bad Morning America, or No Morning America. You don't have the right 
to change the Christian doctrine. You can be famous. You can be on television. People can laud your name. All that you still cannot change the church and you cannot change biblical orthodoxy. You can't change what the church believed and has always believed and will always believe. Now notice uh, Robin Roberts says uh, people thinking you can't be a homosexual and be a Christian made her afraid of coming out. It didn't make you afraid of coming out of being a homosexual. It didn't, it didn't cause you to say, you know what? <clears throat> Uh, this this lesbian thing uh, can't be normal, can't be right. You know, we can't we can't reproduce. It is clear through biology that a woman was not made to be with a woman. It is clear. It is clear through the writings of Scripture, both New and Old Testament, that you're not supposed to desire to have sex with a member of the same sex. Paul says, even their women leaving the natural use of the man, burning in their flesh one toward another, doing that which is unseemly. The Bible teaches about people going after strange flesh. Biology shows you that two women together uh, cannot procreate. Uh, and to be honest with you, the parts don't fit. So I got to wrap this up, Gary. I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little deep in here. So I, 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 you know what? I, I'll finish it tonight, and uh, that's what I think I'll do. I'll add it to the uh, the purity weekend, and uh, I want to uh, just kind of take this uh, apart because people know how to communicate evil to you, and, and and they know how to do what Isaiah warned about. They know how to make evil sound good. Isaiah said, woe be unto them that put evil for good and good for evil. Light for darkness and darkness for light. Bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. He says, Who, whoever do, do, do so is an abomination to the Lord. Veteran journalist and television personality Robin Roberts recently unveiled in a personal revelation concerning her sexuality and religious beliefs. In a candid discussion with author and entrepreneur Jamil Lima, Karen Lima uh, on the podcast, the Jamie Kern, K-E-R-N, Lima show, Roberts shares her inner turmoil about coming out to her audience in 2013, citing fear stemming from societal perceptions and being a devoted Christian. I guess she calls herself a devoted Christian. Well, we're going to look into this tonight. And uh, it says uh, part two of the, of, the, of the interview, it deals with her personal life and her health challenges, uh, her experience uh, managing a dual identity and her Christian faith. I want to talk to you about it because you know what? This things like this, these kind of articles, they're aimed at the unsuspecting. They're aimed at the people who are not paying attention. They're aimed at those who claim to be Christians, but they don't read the Bible. Those who claim to be Christians, but undoubtedly are not filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'm amazed at the uh, degree of self-importance that many who are on television give themselves and, uh, uh, and they really get ahead of their skis and think more highly of themselves than they ought to think. I mean, anytime you write and you said there are so many people whose livelihood depend on the success of our show. And so if I don't do something, if I do something that hurts the show, it hurts them. Well, I guess she's talking about people who work at the show because I'm sure there's nobody watching whose livelihood is dependent upon watching Good Morning America uh, every day. So I want you to join me tonight. I want to talk about these things and other things. There is a thus saith the Lord. There's something that I want to give you from the Lord. That's going to bless you tonight real good. And uh, I want to prepare our youth and our seniors. 
<laughs> and the middle age and everybody out there, you need to be prepared in these last days, oh my, to fight the good fight of faith, to lay hand on eternal life and to serve the God of the Bible. Now, I'm going to stop right here. I've talked long enough. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ during the Purity Weekend, July 11th through the 14th. Join me tonight right here for Bible study. <laughs> yes, we're going to study the word of the Lord together and the Lord is going to bless us real good. We'll see you tonight.